In Emin and Aher, Augustan Vik, Augustan Spirit Nave. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. On behalf of the Harrington family, I'd like to welcome you all here this morning as we gather to celebrate the funeral mass for Tom Harrington, late of Kilnagrantha. And on my own behalf and on behalf of Father Michal Donnelly, who joins me in this celebrated Mass, on behalf of all of you gathered here today, we'd like to extend our very deepest sympathy to you, Frank, his brother, and his Tom's sisters in law, Bridge and Anne, and his nephews and nieces, and relatives, neighbours, and friends. In this Mass, we thank God for the life of Tom, and we pray now that he is at home with God, reunited with his brothers and sisters and his parents in the fullness of eternal life. And before we begin our Mass proper now, we're going to bring to the altar symbolic gifts chosen specially by the family, and we're going to bring them to the altar. So we'd ask the members of the family that are going to bring the gifts to the altar to, to come forward. And each of the symbolic gifts are representations of the life of Tom. And uh, the first item uh, is, is the halter. That was very much uh, dear to uh, Tom. Uh, this represents Tom's love of farming and, and showing of his livestock at various shows and sales countrywide. And Fr Frank brings the halter. Uh, which is used in Frank's farm to this day. So we thank God for, for the great love of farming and it certainly enriched the farming life. And music, of course, music very much centered around, around Tom's life. And his favorite songs were Paddy Riley, Percy French song, Come Back Paddy Riley, and The Fields of Athen Rye, and Joe Dolan and Johnny McEvoy, all these, he, he got some lovely, pleasurable hours from listening to music. And whenever you'd go to the house, those, that music would be, be played. And machinery, of course, uh, Tom was gifted with his hands, inventive with his hands. He, he loved, loved everything mechanical, from cars to tractors, even to batteries. And, in later lives developed a great love for painting and carpentry. And one of his, his uh, pets, the cat, cat was a particularly uh, close uh, companion of Tom and, and gave him great companionship, especially after Paddy's death. Uh, he was very much on his own and the cat that lovely picture we have on the coffin of Cat, of the Tom and his cat, Cat Ginger, they used to call him, was great company, especially over the last two years. And finally, Paddy and Tom always 
pay their annual visit to Nark Shrine, very much reflecting his faith. And so we bring holy water today from Nark Shrine. Uh, remind us of Tom's faith in God and in the Mother of God. So these are the symbolic gifts we place here on the remembrance table, uh, all remind us of different aspects and different facets of the life of Tom. So we begin then our Mass, conscious of our own frailties in life, of our struggles in life, as we call to mind our sins, particularly uh, the times that we, in our actions, in our inactions, and in our reactions. So we pause for a moment, call into mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. A hirdna gentrokra, a kriast gentrokra, a hirdna gentrokra. And let us pray. O God, glory of believers and life of the just, by the death and resurrection of your Son, we are redeemed. Have mercy on Tom. Make him worthy to share the joys of paradise, for he believed in the resurrection of the dead. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and you to the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We're now going to listen to God's Word. And the first reading taken from the book of Ecclesiastes. So the first reading. And in this reading we're reminded that there's a time for everything. God has given us so many opportunities in life to do endless good. So we will listen then to our first reading. And Frank is going to read our first reading. The first reading, a reading from the book of Leviathan. Everything that happens in this world happens at time. God chooses. He sets the time for birth and the time for death, the time for planting and the time for pulling up. He sets the time for sorrow and the time for joy, the time for mourning and the time for happiness. He sets the time for finding and the time for losing, the time for saving, the time for throwing away, the time for silence and the time for talk. He has at the right time for everything. He has given us a desire to know the future, but never gives us the satisfaction of understanding fully what he does. All we can do is to be faithful and strive to do whatever good we can while we are still alive. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Their 
understand you shall see the face of God and live be not afraid I go before you always come follow me and I will give you rest if you pass through raging waters in the sea you shall not drown if you walk amid the burning flames you shall not be harmed if you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side know that I am with you through it all be not afraid I go before you always come follow me and I a great note of hope in our second reading and it's remind us that what we suffer in this life can never be compared with the glory that awaits us in heaven a reading from the second letter of saint paul to the corinthians we should never become discouraged even though our physical being is gradually decaying yet our spiritual being is renewed day by day This this small and temporary trouble we suffer will bring us a tremendous and eternal glory, much greater than the pain and sorrow we now suffer. We fix our attention not on things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. What can be seen lasts only for a time, but what cannot be seen lasts forever. For we know that when this tent we live in Our body here on earth is torn down. God will have a house in heaven for us to live in, a home he himself has made, which will last forever. This is the word of the Lord. Happy are those who die in the Lord. Now they can rest forever after their work, since their good deeds go with them. We're now going to listen to the gospel, and the gospel I have chosen today is the gospel of the Good Shepherd. That's a lovely description of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, and very appropriate that we read that gospel, of course, particularly in our church, first of all, dedicated to the church, Christ the Good Shepherd, and very appropriate too that we will read it at Tom's funeral, because Tom was certainly a Good Shepherd in so many ways and certainly when you saw him out in the fields tending to his flock when you be passing you said there is the good shepherd minding his sheep and minding his flock so the lord be with you a reading from the holy gospel according to john jesus said I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired man, since he is not the shepherd, 
and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired man runs away because a hired man does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. Every human person born into this world is born for a time and a purpose. God has a unique role for each one of us, which was not ordained for anybody else. We are a non-repeatable gift from God. We are willed and loved by God. We have a body and a soul which distinguishes us from every other form of life on this planet. Our primary purpose on this earth is to know, love and serve God in this world so that we will be eternally with him in heaven. And it's through our faith and our faithfulness to God that we will one day share the fullness of eternal life. Every time we gather as a family and a community of faith for a funeral mass of a loved one, we are forcibly reminded of the brevity of life and the precarious hold we have on life. Here today and gone tomorrow. It puts life into perspective for all of us. This morning we gather in prayer with you, the Harrington family, as you mourn the death of your brother, your brother-in-law, your uncle, your neighbor, your friend. And while there is inevitable sadness at the death of Tom, there's also a sense of relief that he is freed from all his sickness and suffering. Thankfully, none of us know what may be around the corner for any of us. But we're all conscious of the finality of our human existence. We are mortal beings, but as people of faith, we also believe in our immortality. Our faith reminds us that death is the culmination of all we did or tried to do in our lifetime. And we pray for the dead because we believe in the resurrection of the dead. We believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. And it's our fervent belief that as faithful people of God on earth, we will one day be reunited with those we have loved and those that have loved us. Tom has completed his life on earth and our prayer is that all that he did and all that he aspired to do in this world would be fully realized for him in the fullness of life. We have come here today to pay our prayerful tribute to Tom in this funeral mass, to commend him to the mercy and care of God. We surround his mortal remains with our love and our prayers as we thank God for his life and his presence in this parish. Tom died peacefully and last Sunday evening in the devoted care of Oakwood Nursing Home, Roscommon. Having been previously in the medical care of Roscommon Hospital, Portiuncle Hospital and Galway University Hospital.
And I know that you as a family would like me to express your grateful thanks and appreciation for all the wonderful care and attention that he got while in hospital and in residential care. And especially that he was able to stay so long at home in the place that he loved to be. Born on the 2nd of January 1937 to William and Mary Harrington, Nee Kelly, in the townland of Lacken in the parish of Rahara. He was the third in a family of six, four boys and two girls, and he's survived by his brother, Hugh Frank, and predeceased by his sisters, Philomena and Annie, and his brothers, Paddy and Noel. Began his spiritual journey of, in this and world and when he was baptized in Rahara Church in January 1937. And today, he completes his journey of faith in this world and returns to his God, where we pray he is now eternally with him in his presence. Tom received his early education in Rahara School and from an early age was engrossed in the family farm. A love and interest he nurtured throughout his entire life. He loved the land and anything associated with agriculture. In the 1950s, the family purchased their farm in Kilnagralta and for over 60 years, the family has been part of this parish. Shortly after their arrival here, their dad, William, died at a relatively young age and the family were left to manage the farm. They clubbed together and under the watchful eye of their mother developed a very enterprising farm and were known far and near for their prize livestock. Both Tom and Paddy and Hugh Frank received many prizes at livestock shows throughout the country. Tom had his own herd of pedigree limousines, cattle, and won many championship prizes over the years. He was an outstanding judge of livestock and of both cattle and sheep and officiated as a judge at various occasions throughout the country. He found pedigree Hefford cattle with his, his brothers Paddy and Hugh Frank and his mother Mary winning prizes countrywide and being awarded championship rosettes and trophies. You regularly, the family regularly featured, of course, on our papers and particularly on farming issues. His pedigree cattle were sought after by farmers everywhere and many were eagerly sought overseas and exported. The 1950s, a particular line of cattle called the Queen were bred on his farm and those line continue in Frank's to this day. Tom was noted and very skillful at bargaining and striking a deal and you could be quite certain that he would always come out the better in any transaction. Isn't that right, Frank? <laughs> Shepherding his flock was second nature to him. And as the gospel reminded us, I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. And there was no doubt that Tom knew his own and personified the good shepherd. It was such a beautiful pastoral scene to watch Tom tending his flock in Kilnagrantha. It would be hard to imagine Kilnagrantha without Tom. It was the life and soul of his neighborhood, always having plenty of time to stop and to talk and to ramble. He was the traditional farmer in every sense of the word. 
How appropriate and apt are the lines from the poem entitled The Farmer, penned by our local poet, the late Dr. Noel Davis, who lived in Tom's adjoining townland of Bushy Park. This poem very much reflects Tom's life as a farmer, and this is what she wrote. He walks his fields at springs returning, fields that for three score years he trod, the dear familiar signs discerning of life renewed in three and sought. No more with straight and youthful bearing he moves, but bowed with age and toil, yet true a deep-felt kingship sharing the vernal impulse of the soil. Lord, when he comes to heaven's portal, give him no alien crown of gold, but let him see thy springs immortal, crowning those fields he loved of old. Tom was very much, uh, very mechanically minded and skilled with both the operation and the maintenance of machinery. He loved to figure out the intricacies of mechanically operated machinery and was so inventive in repairing all types of malfunctioning apparatuses. He loved the simple things of life, as I said, chatting and rambling, and inevitably, I'd say there was never a conversation, but he didn't discuss livestock, cattle prices, mark prices, but always, of course, showing an interest in people's welfare, especially his neighbours. His heart and mind was always, as I said, on farming issues. He had many lovable qualities, so friendly and so inoffensive, he could talk to anybody, regardless of who they were. He was deeply conscious of his God and very much aware of his mortality and equally conscious of his immortality. Both he and Tom never missed a year that they didn't go on pilgrimage to Knock. I've no doubt that his close associate affinity with his farm and his love of nature revealed to him the wonders of God and his creation and the importance, of course, of faith in living one's life. He came to this church as long as he had the strength to do so. He would invariably take up his position down there on the, on the left hand side of the church. And you didn't have to look down to see him before Mass because you could hear him before you could see him. <laughs> and after an eventful week, he had a little bit of catching up to do with the neighbors. So the conversation would always ensue. We each have our happy and cherished memories of our association with Tom. He endeared himself to young and old alike. Wherever he went, he made friends. And the best tribute we can pay him now is to remember and live the things that were important in his life, especially his faith and love of God. There was nobody more conscious of their failings than Tom, and I know that he would want all of us to pray that God will be merciful to him for any fault or omission he may have committed or neglected to while he was on earth. And the only thing that we can give Tom now is our prayers and our charity. Every time we celebrate a funeral mass for a loved one, we are all reminded that we are people of passage in this world, journeying in search and in hope of an eternal salvation. The sadness of every funeral is eclipsed by the joy and hope of the resurrection, because for the faithful Christian, life is changed, not taken away. We believe that Christ in dying has destroyed our death and in rising has restored our life. And it's for that reason that our hearts are full of hope on this day as we pray for Tom. 
In life he has experienced both the joyful and the sorrowful mysteries of life. May Tom now enjoy the glorious mysteries of eternal life, reunited with his parents, his brothers and his sisters. And you can imagine all the catching up they have to do. So may Tom's spirit live on and may his soul rest in peace. Banak J. Anam. We stand then for our prayers to the faithful. And God our Father, we ask you then to listen to these, the prayers of Tom's family. We pray for the Harrington and Kelly family, for his father and mother, William and Mary Harrington, his sisters, Annie and Philomena, his brothers, Paddy and Noel. Lord, hear us. We pray for all the medical, nursing, palliative care, caring and catering staff in Port Jungle Hospital, University Hospital Galway, Roscommon Hospital and Oakwood Nursing Home for their excellent care to Tom. Lord, hear us. We pray for Tom's friends and neighbours who made sure Tom went about his daily routine safely. Lord, hear us. We remember the public health nurses the daycare centre in Roscommon and Tom's home help. Without these, Tom would not have remained at home for as long as he did. Lord, hear us. And Tom had a great devotion to Our Lady, as we know all his times he went to Knox. So let us now commend him and all God's people, living and dead, to Mary, our mother, as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, my women, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And a very important prayer, the prayer of silence. So we pause for a moment now as we pray in silence. Conscious of all those who are struggling with ill health at this time, Asking the Lord to lay his healing hands on all who are sick, particularly those who are suffering from terminal illness, those who are suffering from debilitating illnesses, and all those who need prayers this day. And we think too of people in many parts of the world where they haven't even access to medicine to alleviate pain. Lord, hear us. God our Father, you are the creator and sustainer of all life. You love us with a love which is beyond all we could ever hope for or imagine. You're attentive to every need before we know them ourselves. Look upon us, your people, and look kindly on Tom and all for whom we have prayed here today through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Tom, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your altar, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust and peace into the world. Remember Tom and his parents, William and Mary, his brothers, Paddy and Noel, his sisters, Philomena and Annie, and all the deceased members of the Harrington and Kelly families who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is complete, <clears throat> that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Life on earth is a journey of faith, beginning for each of us at our baptism, and through our faithfulness to God will one day lead us to eternal life. As we continue that journey of faith, let us renew our hope in God the Father, the creator and sustainer of all life, as we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. We pause then for a moment to pray for peace, particularly in a world where there can be so much unhappiness, so much violence, so much hatred, so much intolerance. We pray for peace, particularly peace within family life, within communities, in the wider world. And we pray especially for peace within ourselves. And today we pray for the eternal peace of Tom. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
grant us peace. Which body and drink of blood, let's not be in condemnation. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul should be healed.
so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more. Communion reflection, remember the rising of the sun and its going down, we will remember him. The blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember him. The opening of the buds and the rebirth of spring, we will remember him. The blueness of the sky and the warmth of summer, we will remember him. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember him. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember him. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember him. When we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember him. When we have joys and special celebrations we wish to share, we will remember him. So long as we live, he too shall live, because he's part of us. We will remember him. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, that petulant light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant, Tom, for whom we have celebrated this Eucharist, may pass over to a dwelling place of eternal light and peace through Christ our Lord. Well, just before the final accommodation, I just want to be half of Frank and all the family just to thank you especially for being here today and for Father Michal, his neighbour, and all the, of you that have participated in our celebration of Tom's life here today in this Eucharist. And um, we all have lovely memories of Tom, so inoffensive. Uh, the problem always was to get away from him when he started talking, you know. So he was a great talker and loved to chat and loved to ramble. And I said, we, we will miss him so much from our parish here in so many ways. He was certainly a, a character and uh, one that, that we admired and loved so much. So we pray now that he is eternally happy in heaven. And to thank all those who were so kind to him in life, and particularly in the latter years of his life, he had some very good neighbours and he had some excellent carers and a lovely attention in hospital and in the nursing home to all the people that in different ways brought him comfort uh, particularly in a time that he needed i know how grateful you are to all those people and to the people who befriended him in life itself and he had a lot of friends and he made a lot of friends and uh, he certainly uh, was uh, featured very much in farming circles. So may he rest in peace. The Lord be with you. Go manage your hope to shift Achor Mark of the Spirit Nave. We'll stand now for the final commendation.
before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of Tom. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to his aid. Come to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who has called you, Tom, take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. Let petrol light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend, Tom, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to Tom and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of our faith until we all meet in Christ are with you and Tom forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And in peace now let us take Tom to his final place of rest in that league cemetery.
Lady 